We're gonna try another day out here. Almost got all of the cab off parts. We're gonna finish all of these parts before I go taking the engine apart any farther. Check out our power steering. <laughs> it works pretty good to drain that fluid out. I don't really push any through it because it's a little sketchy, but I like to let it sit there and it'll drain the fluid out. It'll be all clean, ready for new fluid in it. We can take a quick look around here. He's got this Y pipe that we're not going to be using. A pipe down there. I think we're probably going to use ours. Uh, with the AC compressor that broke off, the bolts broke, there's a leak coming from somewhere on there, and I really don't know that I even want to trust this manifold line. Uh, Julie looked it up. 120, 130 bucks, something like that. This line was on the truck when the failure happened, when the bolts broke. Really don't want to trust anything with that as far as being able to hold free on in. Finish these up, finish all this, and snap our fingers, and these will all be over on the shelf. Like. <laughs> Finishing touches on some of the last parts. We got the running boards all done. Well, we got basically everything done. This cart is going over there to be put on the shelf, ready to go, and the table's empty. I've cleaned it a lot. I sprayed the holy crap out of it. I don't know how clean the starter is down there. I tried to get it pretty good. Uh, let, let's just start at what I got to take off. Missing a nut. Missing another one there on the glow plug control module. Thick him out, missing a nut. You really think they put that one on down there? Oh my goodness, they did. When you got the pick'em nuts here on both sides, that generally will say that it's a 20 millimeter engine. There'll be bolts right here if it is an 18 millimeter block. If it's a 20 millimeter block, there'll be no bolts right there. I gave this transmission about as good as once over as I could. Harness came fairly clean. It does not look that bad. We have not talked about the engine harness yet, but I, it needs a reset. I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, there's so many bare wires on it and broken plugs. We'll, we'll get it off the truck and discuss that later. When he got it back, it was pouring fuel all over everywhere. These cylinder heads are actually from Ron. He supplied those to the place that did the stud job. We're going to vac test them, but we're not going to rework these heads. We're just going to give them a, a, just an eyeballs on them and check them out, see if everything looks all right. And if it does, we're going to clean them up and we're going to put them back in service. I put sealant on that connection, so I wouldn't see that as a negative. I don't know how many seal that off the very first bat when they put it together, or if this was an emergency when they put it all back together and it was leaking from there and they had to take it out and slap some sealant on it and stick it back in while the truck was like supposed to be done. That is probably more likely what happened. We'll look over this glow plug wire. It's on the wrong freaking side. It's missing a connector there. We're gonna look over everything. Fickham harness is beat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at the differences in the casting on this turbo. I'm starting to get a little freaking worried here. That is so freaking tight that I hadn't even fathomed that and how bad this can be destroyed. We've already got bolts missing. Let's hope we don't wind up with a whole crap load of inserts. Every freaking wear. Damn it. Oh my God. Okay. Clean the intake a little better than that, would you? Break anything, jeez. I do not replace these O-rings though. We will clean this up. We will put it right back in. Do not replace any of the O-rings, any of the gaskets, nothing. Like not even that top gasket. We are just very careful when we clean it. Don't get a bunch of water in it. Do not replace that. Do not get rid of it either. Leave it in there. Otherwise you're one of them guys with your freaking wire just sitting here hanging around. That tells you right there. This is the first time this cap has been taken off since that damage occurred is what we're seeing right here. They damaged it and then tightened it down and it has not been loosened back up since then. I just turned that and it curly cued the plastic out of it. Well, oh, new filter though. That's good to see. I mean, on it, should we bag that and reuse yeah. it? Yeah. I'm kind of concerned with the fuel quality. Okay, you see how inside of there it's discolored? That means rust. All you needed to do was just deburr that a little bit. It might have been fine, but that didn't even have a chance. This was another leak right here. I wonder if they'll see anything. The oil filter did have oil in it, so. This is a late model truck. Oh. That actually horribly freaking sucks, right? It bent that pin a little bit. We'll see if we can get it out of there. 
socks thing? Grass in it. Is that from heat or just dirt? Mm -hmm. This Fickham harness has been stolen. This is not the harness that came on this truck. They stole his harness. All the tabs are broke. We had one tab keeping it running right there. I mean, they got all kinds of crap going on underneath here. Damn it. I mean, I was considering using glow plug wire. It got smashed and the whole damn cover's missing off of it. Twisted the hell out of it too. Generally from coolant leaking out a degas bottle on a late model truck. Oh no. I felt like crap coming out of there. Duly noted. It's got the old O-ring and no sealant. In order to get this out, you get a little bit of gap and wiggle it and get a screwdriver in. This one did wiggle a little bit. Some of them, they don't wiggle at all. So you got to really fight. Barely get the tip in, wiggle it around, keep putting the tip in, keep putting the tip in. Eventually it's gone, but look inside. So we need, we're getting a new hose for that. We're not gonna leave that on there. They grabbed that sucker with who knows what and was holding it right here and trying to yank it out. That is done. It doesn't need sealant. Generally on the repairs that we go through, we put a new thermostat on it. Very, very close to getting in there where it seals at. And then you just cause yourself a freaking problem. And at least clean your intake temp sensor. If you're gonna put on the J-tube and you're gonna eliminate what you eliminated, then clean this off too. Don't be that guy so that I can talk smack on you. If you go ahead and clean it up, then I take it out and be like, oh, well, at least they thought a little bit, but they didn't even think a little bit. This is the procedure to change your main engine harness. I take the cab off and paint the bottom. Power wash at the top of the engine apart. Plug the glow plug control module. If you go back in previous videos, when I put one together, I don't put this in until we're done. Look how high up it is. That is not where it goes. Let's see if I can even get it out of there. Okay. Good job. Oh, look at the tabs going. The orange piece in there and the icp is missing the yellow o-ring in the basket i mean you know this harness functioned and it worked but it's freaking beat we'll still ultrasonic it let's try to make it look somewhat decent. put it down there i might want to go put it in right now i'm gonna go put it in right now put on a single conversion on an acert cat this is getting comical everything is in the wrong place ron said that he thought they was grinding on something on the front uh they couldn't get the lifting eyes out so they cut the hell out of it. And this is infamous for early model. This is why I put the, what I call the IPR bracket on right here. If you don't have that bracket on, then this will spin. That's why there's a connector on it right there because it was seized. They put it together like this and then you try to loosen that tin and it spins this around and tears that up. That's exactly what happened to this. So you need to cut down a skinny tin, which is almost too little. Look how this, they put that fitting on there. It doesn't really go on. So I'm just gonna make it happen. Put that sun bitch in there and then we're done. If you're fighting this back here, do it even if it's cab on and everything is in the way. Take you a 10, find one and cut it down so that it's skinny so it'll fit down in between. That's enough to hold this to keep you from spinning it. You might not have to get your freaking connector and do some cobbled freaking crap like that. Same thing applies to the Fickham brackets and have a 12 gear wrench when you loosen these up. It'll spin down here and then it won't lift up any and it'll strip the bolts out inside of the rocker box by trying to take the Fickham bracket off. If you need to disconnect this, you take your little screwdriver and put it down in the rocker box and then you push that down and you pry it like that. It's nice and secure and then shake it sideways right there and it pulls it right out. It shouldn't take you almost no time at all to get them all out. I don't know how this thing was working. I mean, but it was, it was firing. It's, that's the Fickham harness. <laughs> Whatever. Oil doesn't look half bad. Pull your pump out first and it drains the reservoir for the oil cooler. So always do your pump first. This is where you stick the pencil magnet down in right here, almost every oil change. You do that, you will be paying attention to any metal that's in your truck. This is the low point right here. There will be metal in here if you got a failure. Well, they left us a little note. How long this Chinese cooler does the job. Made in China, it is a Dorman oil cooler. 7 11 to 23. Okay, and the other side of that is when we look down in here at the oil cooler screen, this tells you that they use cloth inside of here and did not clean it out. That is fuzz like a son of a gun. Lint. So if one of these screens, one of these little window panes would have broke out, we would have lost an IPR valve is what would have happened. All that would have got into the, look at that. All that would have got into the IPR valve. Looks like cat hair. I mean, don't, I mean, you can use a towel inside of this housing, but you better blow it out, brake clean it, get I'll all of it out. It. That was in there. 
That is a shop towel. If I put enough of that together, I could wipe something off with it. Give me a freaking break. Jesus. This is just a couple of minutes inside the cleaner. I have not done any prep work at all. I just set it in the spray cabinet. That's it. And it's compounding times better than it was when it was put on the truck last. It's steaming still. It's hot. If you're going to do this kind of work, you need some cleaning ability. You need to be able to clean it. Otherwise, you're just freaking bolting nasty freaking crap back on. All right, I've stalled enough. Those cannot stay on there. We will replace the rocker box if we have to, but we won't have to. That's coming off right now. I really don't do a lot of welding nuts. Generally find it easier to drill a hole. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I don't know what's gonna work on that one. We missed it, but I was pounding on the bolt extractor and Julie was spinning it with a wrench. She had that bar all the way up in here, but it got it out. Good deal. I got it. Holy guacamole. How do you use that big old breaker bar? And just an adjustable wrench. <laughs> There, that is gone. So no more I literal cobble hacked to hell lifting eye. You take that out in the backyard and beat the shit out of yourself with it. Since after showing you how they did it, let's show you how we do it. If you don't have a torch like this, you need to get one. We've already taken everything off, so we really don't care about the rocker box gasket that's down in there, but within reason. Oh, don't go too freaking far. Okay, so it's got a little heat in it. I'll take this. It's a six, which I wouldn't mind having a short well, but all we have is a deep well. A couple of smacks and a big impact. Let's see what happens. No sweat. Chances are very, very good that you will have maximum success if you just use a six Allen half inch drive with an impact. It'd work on the front too. Yeah. And we, we could pretty much test this. Uh, hang on, stay on it. Stay with us. Let's just see how long it takes because I don't think you cut it. Yeah, I've been eating it for about 20 seconds. Here we go. It's like sizzling. Sizzling. You hear it? It's a little tap. No sweat. Okay, good deal. So when all this tape is gone off of this, this is a fairly important connector. I will go ahead before we disassemble it and just put some tape on this to hold it into place while we're we're gonna get some better tape too and tape these up, but I just want it to stay for cleaning. I wanna know where it's at so that we don't have to move it around and worry about placement. Cause like I said, this is a fairly important connection. I call this an important connection right here. And I will go ahead and separate these two, separate this, and then I'll go ahead and tape, tape this onto here where it needs to be. This is all good down here, see it? It all looks pretty freaking good. It's not taken apart. It's not destroyed, so we'll leave that. But this one was completely gone. There was nothing left. So we'll just take a little time right now, get it set. That way when we go to tape it all up, I know that this is right. So we will go ahead and take the transmission harness very gracefully out of the truck so we can clean a lot of this stuff. The ultrasonic cleaner works wonders with these things. Oh, there's one broke off right there. Oh, see it right there? And it's barely on. Yeah, we need to tape that back on. I'll fish it out of here. I don't want that to fall off. I want to tape that up right now. Just so you know, it goes underneath the brake line and underneath the fuel line when it goes across the transmission cross member. It goes underneath it. So just take your time and it'll weasel through here. You can get it through all by itself. Now that is the transmission harness. I want to make it brand new again. Oh, this is our water and fuel compulsive. Yeah, you see the sensor right there? There was no amount of draining. Well, I guess a certain amount of draining, maybe. But uh, yeah, once that sludge is there, it holds water. So you're, you'll drain it and then it, this, it's the sludge. Let's clean that out. Eventually we'll get to how you're supposed to be doing stuff and stuff that you would want to see on your truck. Like get the lines out of the way so you can wash them and cap them because this line right here has got that plug right there. And the best way to keep track of it is just to wash the whole freaking line with that connector, because that's the only connector I want. It's disgusting in there. So I'll just leave it on there and wash the line, heck with it. Because that line's trash, it's leaking. She's still over here on this crap. Jesus. Jesus.